Hello, everybody. It's nice of you to join us today. We have singer and songwriter who's a Newfoundlander, Tony Oxford, joining us today on our Facebook Live. We're going to have a wonderful presentation here by Tony. He's going to go through some Newfoundland expressions, some tunes of the sea that he'll be performing for us. He'll talk about cultural traditions and how Adventure Canada supports scientific research, education, and community engagement on Newfoundland expeditions. So, Tony, what are you at? This is it. <laughs> I forgot the rest. I'm going to have to watch the presentation and uh, and learn from you, but I'll be behind the scenes. Tony, I'm passing this on to you now, okay? All right. Well, the great reason to uh, come visit us in Newfoundland and Labrador is to learn a whole new language. It doesn't matter uh, what's going on in the, this province, but if somebody asks you, um, what are you at? You say, this is it. You could be involved in the most intricate form of neurosurgery, but the question, what are you at, is followed by this is it. And how are you getting on is the best kind. Now, today, it's a little bit on the Mozzie side here in Newfoundland today. I got up this morning and I had a few totems and uh, I drop a switch over for me breakfast, and I thought I'd go down to the lamb wash and, and douse a few killings, but I didn't get past the porch with that. And I, I lost the punch pig in overboard and I sat on a whore's egg and I was taking the needles of that out of my backside for no one knows how long. And then I came up to find out that my uncle had a swell bone caught across his key corn and he couldn't glutch and I had to spend the rest of the day contending with that. So that's my day. Uh, so far here in Newfoundland and Labrador. And I can tell by the virtual gasp and Oz that you don't have a first clue while my day has gone so far. But that's the beauty of coming here. You learn some of that. But uh, thank you, Victoria, for your, uh, for your, your introduction. Um, I live uh, on the island of Newfoundland. We're right on the east coast of Canada. For those of you who are a little bit geographically challenged as to uh, where this place is. We're uh, two parts to our province. We have the island portion, Newfoundland, and we have a mainland portion uh, that's called Labrador. And a lot of people um, love to go to Labrador. It's a different bucket list for a lot of people. They've been to Newfoundland, but it's really special when they set foot in, in Labrador. And with uh, Adventure Canada, we go there. So just a few things about this province. Uh, we don't have very much time. Usually it takes many of us uh, in this province to let the time I've been allocated to clear our throats to get ready to say anything. But uh, you might identify with uh, a number of firsts in this province. When they say people say Newfoundland and Labrador, you might say, oh yeah, I know. That's the place uh, where we have the oldest city in North America. Or somebody else might say, oh yeah, that's the place where the first underwater communications cable came ashore in North America. And other people might identify and say, oh, that's where uh, Cabot Tower is, where the first uh, transatlantic uh, uh, signal came through the air. A wireless uh, signal came across the Atlantic Ocean. And other people might say, oh yeah, the first uh, airplane flight across the Atlantic Ocean uh, took off from there. Other people might say, oh, that's where the first uh, distress signal for the Titanic uh, came ashore in, uh, in Newfoundland. Uh, you may know us for our dogs. We have uh, two very famous dogs, the Newfoundland and the Labrador Retriever, both of which uh, are uh, based on, uh, on the Great Pyrenees. Uh, you might uh, identify us with our extraordinary uh, time zone. We're a half hour different. If you're in Ontario now, then we're 90 minutes different from what you are. Uh, Canada has 18 World Heritage Sites. Four of them are in this province. And if you uh, travel with Adventure Canada, you're going to visit uh, three of them in the fall time. And for those of you now who uh, could identify with all of what I've said so far about Newfoundland, the identification factors, here's a good one for you. Did you know that we have 
one of two examples of thrombolites on the planet. In Newfoundland, in a place called Flowers Cove, we have uh, thrombolites. And the only other place on the planet where they're known to exist is in uh, Shark Bay uh, near Perth in Australia. And uh, believe it or not, this is the first creature on the planet uh, to have uh, released free oxygen. So that has potential to be a World Heritage Site as well. And its contribution to the evolution of humankind and plant life is uh, significant. So we have a, a unique sense of humor here. I, I'm really nervous about uh, telling jokes. I, um, we, we, uh, we perform very, very well when a bunch of us from the province get together, but I'm nervous about sharing it with the mainland uh, crowd because so many times I've just uh, been left uh, looking stunned because uh, we find things hilarious that other people couldn't care to laugh at. And our language is, uh, is something that we now uh, preserve, as well as our music culture here, where we're really uh, voracious about uh, conservation and preservation of our unique language and our unique music culture in Newfoundland and Labrador uh, these days. And I want to, uh, to share a song with you um, and this is a little bit about our language. One thing that we do invariably in this province is we use the first person singular with the plural form of the verb. So if it, will you say, uh, I like black horse beer, we, here we would say, I likes black horse beer. So there's a little uh, boasting song about the province. And my objective today is to entice you uh, to come here. So with, this is called Good For What Ails Yet. There's a lot of our fellows who've packed up and gone, but listen to me when I tell you they'd rather be living back home on the rock, cause living here's good for what ails you. Living here's good for what ails you. Toronto's got towers, Calgary's got cowboys, there's all kinds of sights in Australia, but they're nothing alongside of our outports. Our outports are good for what ails you, sorry. Our outports are good for what ails you. And if you're up in the city and down on your luck, and not one single thing there that thrills you. With your suitcase in hand, head for old Newfoundland. We'll have something here good for what ails you. We'll have something here good for what ails you. You can eat Japan sushi or all China's rice or big Texas steaks till they kills you. But they're nothing outside of our pork buns and duffs. The grub here's sure good for what ails you. The grub here's sure good for what ails you. And you can take your vacation and fly on down south. Sweat so much everyone smells you. There's nothing can please like our cool summer breeze. The weather here's good for what ails you. The weather here's good for what ails you. And if you're up in the city and down on your luck, and not one single thing there that thrills you. With your suitcase in hand, head for old Newfoundland. We'll have something here good for what ails you. We'll have something here good for what ails you. Disney's the place we all have to see. They say in them brochures they mails you. Ignore them, my son, and come here for some fun. Our come home years are good for what ails you. Our come home years are good for what ails you. There'll be garden parties and all kinds of fun. 
with the friendliest faces that he'll share. We're certainly sure you'll come back for some more of the kindness that's good for what ails you. We'll have something here good for what ails you. We'll have something that's good for what ails you. That's a little boastful song and uh, accenting our uh, our unique way of uh, of speaking here. But we have a lot more of that. We could do a, a university PhD program on on Newfoundland words and phrases, and uh, but we'll share a lot more of them with you if you uh, come and visit us. Just want to uh, to talk briefly about settlement and uh, if you travel around. Uh, Newfoundland and visit Labrador with Adventure Canada, you get to see uh, what the province looks like now in comparison to what it looked like in 1497 when John Cabot came here. And uh, I'm going to kind of go reverse uh, in, in terms of settlement with the latest, and then we'll move back uh, through the ages with the other groups that have lived here. But John Cabot is alleged to have uh, landed at Cape Bonavista in 1497 and found a tremendous amount of cod and uh, cod has sustained the province uh, for well over uh, 300 years and it's just in the the late years the 50s and 60s and and upwards to uh, the year 2000 when cod uh, cod's value has diminished just give you a little bit of background on cod. It's been eaten in Western Europe for years and years. So when John Cabot found cod here, it was nothing new to the Europeans. And in terms of the evolution of cod, it's uh, said that uh, it's been around maybe millions of years and started uh, to form when the uh, Isthmus of Panama uh, rose up to block off the Atlantic from the Pacific Ocean. And at the same time, the, the, uh, the upper uh, straight linking Alaska uh, with Siberia was uh, coming up out of the water. So disruption in the currents or uh, reassignment of ocean currents led to cod. So it's, uh, it was vital. Cod and fish are synonymous for many, many years in this province. And uh, it was salted cod for the Western Europe European market uh, was the only reason to settle this province and for, uh, for people eventually to start living here year round. So we had uh, the millennium celebrations uh, took place in the year 2000, but three years earlier in, in 1997, we celebrated 500 years uh, since uh, John Cabot uh, was alleged to have discovered Newfoundland. It was a big old celebration, and I wrote a song called 500 Years. So I just want to share that one with you now to give you an idea of the uh, settlement of, of this province. Again, you'll have to uh, excuse me for being a little bit boastful about the province, but uh, I make no apologies for that. We got a lot to boast about here. It's been 500 years, boys, 500 years since a ship set out from Bristol one fine day. It was 1497, they set out in search of heaven, and they found it when they anchored in the bay. When the British started out, for them there was no doubt, at the setting sun there lay a pot of gold. So for jewels, spice, and pearls, they would sail around the world with hopes and dreams just like the gypsy told. All the best maps of the day showed a beeline to Bombay, straight to all the wealth and treasure that they sought. But John Cabot and his crew about cast some prisoners too were bound for greater treasure than they thought. We've got oil and hydropower, Castle Hill and Cabot Tower, fishing grounds which are the envy of the world. We have music, dance and song, we can laugh the whole night long, 
Cause our strength of spirit is our priceless pearl. We've been up and we've been down. We've been pushed and shoved around. We've been given away and taken back again. We've been sold and we've been bought. Nations for our fish have fought. But our heritage survived through thick and thin. And it's been 500 years, boys, 500 years since the ship set out from Bristol one fine day. It was 1497, they set out in search of heaven, and they found it when they anchored in the bay. We've been a colony of weight, we've been a province and a state, we've been gambled for and cheaters played the game. We've had heroes in great wars, we've defended foreign shores, sacrificing all we lived up to our name. So may we, as in days of yore, guard this land 500 more, may we ever look to brighter things in store. When our children bless their hearts, never from their homes must part, may they see a time when want will be no more. And it's been 500 years, boys, 500 years since the ship set out from Bristol one fine day. It was 1497, they set out in search of heaven, and they found it when they anchored in the bay. So the cod uh, that we uh, were so uh, interested in around the province uh, was located along the shoreline and settlement in this province uh, took place wherever uh, there was an abundance of cod and wherever there was a safe harbor nearby. So as you can imagine with such a long coastline, we had uh, a number of villages and to interpret the, the term village as loosely as we could, uh, it might, might be accurate to say that there was a time when we had something like 900 settlements along the coast of Newfoundland and Labrador, pockets of a, a dozen or more people uh, pursuing the, the salt cod fishery. So that was the, uh, the John Cabot 1497 on our history books uh, uh, said without uh, any, uh, any fear of contradiction that John Cabot discovered Newfoundland, but uh, that's not exactly so. Um, then you move to, uh, we had the Basque uh, were here at about the same time, and the Spanish and the Portuguese, there was a, generally after Cabot, there was an invasion of the province uh, for uh, the cod that was uh, around our shores. So if you, uh, if you join us on the, the circumnavigation of Newfoundland, uh, you get to see Red Bay, and uh, that's a World Heritage Site in in Labrador, and the, the bass, they came here, they were more interested in whales, and it said that uh, they took, in the period of 50 years or so, when they were in Newfoundland, they took something like, like 50,000 uh, whales, and there was a time when oil from whales uh, harvested in, uh, in the Red Bay area lit the lamps of Western Europe. So that, it's a very intriguing story up there, the underwater archaeological dig, uh, the, the fact that uh, it was uh, uh, a ship that was lost up there to San Juan and the court records from the suit that was launched by the crew trying to get a share of the proceeds of the insurance settlement uh, just accidentally led to, to the place being discovered and the underwater archaeological dig taking place, and of course, it's a World Heritage uh, Site today. Uh, that's in Red Bay, Labrador. So then going back to the year uh, 1000, uh, we can uh, find another World Heritage Site in Lance Meadows up at the tip of, of Newfoundland. And again, uh, it was more by accident that that was uh, discovered. 
uh, two Norwegians were searching the east coast of uh, North America looking for signs of the Norse because the sagas had indicated that they had been here. And finally, their, their, their uh, adventures took them from New England all along the Maritimes. And, and finally, in Lansom Meadows, they were describing to an old gentleman what they were looking for. And he took them to a place that he called the Old Indian Camp. And as soon as they saw uh, the site there, they knew that the Norse had been uh, in Lansom Meadows. So uh, that resulted in an archaeological dig. And today, uh, Lansom Meadows is a, a World Heritage Site for the Norse. Of course, the Norse uh, were, uh, were, weren't uh, marauders. Uh, they weren't Vikings. They were just uh, people who, uh, who wanted uh, the resources of the land, namely timber, because Iceland, by the time uh, Leif Erikson arrived in the year 1000, had already been deforested. I'm just going to tell you the, the story of Lance Meadows in a song. This is called Vinland the Good. And it's uh, Vinland, a place of wine, of course. Uh, there's some debate about that, but uh, for seafarers, anything that could be converted to alcohol would have been van in the strict term. So this is Vinland the Good, and the good refers to anything that had commercial value. Leif the Lucky was born with a thorn in his shoe. A great Viking mariner bred through and through. The sea was the pulse that he found in his veins as he traveled from Iceland to Ireland and Spain. Bjarni was a friend of the Ericsson clan. He got lost on his way to do trade in Greenland. Blown far to the west, he had followed some shore where he never once landed or tried to explore. Such an unexplored land was a shame for the Norse. There was nothing a sailor could do that was worse. But the sea in Leif's ears roared when he heard the tale. Till he bought Bjarni's ship and prepared to set sail. By the sun in the day and Polaris at night. Until Baffin Island came into his sight. Up the Labrador coast just as fast as he could. Across the Strait of Belle Isle to Vinland the Good. Now he felt more lucky when he stepped on shore than he'd ever felt in his lifetime before. He walked through more timber than his ship could hold. Was a cargo he knew would be worth more than gold. And in a land of such promise, he soon built a town. And wintered in Stofa's dug into the ground. Spring brought a cargo all ready to sail. And soon other Norsemen would follow their trail. But alas, they were taught by a formidable foe that to live by the sword was to die by the bow. So with heads full of worries and hearts full of fears, they gave peace to our scralings for 500 years. Across the Strait of Belle Isle from Finland the Good, down the Labrador coast, just as fast as they could until Baffin Island was lost or the stern. No more to the west they would ever return until Baffin Island was lost or the stern. No more to the west they would ever return. Well, that's Finland the Good. 
Now, uh, Skrelings, you mentioned uh, Skrelings as the reason that the Norse left, and there's not a lot of archaeological evidence to support that, but the Sagas certainly uh, support the notion that the North American natives uh, drove the, the Norse away from, from Newfoundland. Of course, there, the, uh, the colony out there uh, didn't last very long. It may have been no longer than a decade when people uh, from uh, the Norse country stayed in Lanza Meadows. And they would have ventured much further south as well. There's a, a bronze uh, pin up there to hold a cloak together, and there's a spindle world, both uh, ancient Norse technology, but there's also a butternut. And of course, they didn't have uh, butternuts in Scandinavia, so the obvious implication is that they would have traveled at least as far as the uh, Miramichi region in New Brunswick, which is the, the northern boundary for uh, the growth of butternut even back in those days. So Lanza Meadows, uh, which we uh, would look at with Adventure Canada, a very fascinating place uh, to visit and, uh, and historically significant to the world, and certainly uh, with the National Historic Site and the World Heritage Site, significant to Canadian and Newfoundland history. So going back even further, we have the, the First Nations, and if you, you study them, uh, 100,000 years ago, people came out of Africa, uh, some wound up in Europe and some went around the planet the other way, and, uh, and wound up crossing uh, the strait from, or underwater, across the water or the land from uh, Siberia or, or Northern Russia into Alaska, and then they dispersed all the way across uh, North America and all the way down to the tip of South America. So if you are familiar with the Clovis culture in, uh, in Montana, that dates back something like 30,000 years. Uh, the Patagonia natives at the tip of South America 9,000 years ago. And in uh, Labrador, we have what's said to be the oldest uh, burial mound in uh, North America. Uh, dating back 7,500 years. And it's sort of inconceivable that that, uh, that, that site would be in Newfoundland because we're kind of the, in Labrador, the last place for the, the natives to, uh, to visit. Uh, but the soil is so uh, uh, well preserving up there that that may be the reason why we have that, uh, that burial mound. So the most uh, uh, significant, we had bunches of uh, the maritime archaic Indians. We had the, uh, the Dorset Paleo Eskimo, the Grosswater Paleo Eskimo, and then the final group uh, to uh, inhabit Newfoundland uh, was the Beothic. And that's a, a kind of a sad story, but uh, not uncommon. We had uh, the loss of many tribes all through the Americas and the Caribbean. Uh, due to aggression by European settlers and disease. And then in, uh, the, in the case of the Beothic, uh, they were a rather xenophobic group. They want nothing to do with the uh, European settlers and didn't get off to a good start with them. And finally, uh, the, the Europeans became aggressive, but worse than that, they introduced uh, tuberculosis and we lost the last one, the last full uh, bread uh, Biafic in 1829 in protective custody in St. John's. Well, I, I'm just, I have a song about that. I'm just going to, in the interest of time, give you a snippet of the song. And uh, then we'll go on to uh, some other historical, uh, historically significant events in Newfoundland and Labrador. This is called Nancy Ochre. All of the Biafics uh, who were captured that we know of were called Nancy and the month of their capture, an ochre was a pigment used on the skin to uh, repel flies as best uh, we could determine. In a place not yet discovered live the people Long ago, the holy land and holy water, bonding body, 
mining soul Scenes of peace In every sunrise Songs of freedom On the wind Taking only What they needed Knowing they Would need again Nancy Oker Did you tell us All the sorrow You had seen Tell us how your spirit managed joy and laughter in between. That's about one third of the song uh, Nancy Oprah, which I, I wrote on my 500 years album uh, about the, uh, the uh, Biafic in Newfoundland and how they were uh, obliterated. But uh, just to join the Norse uh, and the Biafic, uh, just one more uh, point about the, the joy of visiting Lance and Meadows uh, was the completing of the circle. And of course, the, the natives went around the planet uh, from west uh, to east and finally wound up in Newfoundland and Labrador. And then another group came uh, to England and then up in the Scandinavian countries, finally to Iceland and then to Greenland and then to North America. So what's really cool about visiting uh, Lanza Meadows is that you can stand uh, pretty well at the very place where the two different groups, one group going east and one group going west, finally met in Lanza Meadows. And that was the point at which we knew uh, planet Earth had been circumnavigated by humankind. And that's a really uh, cool thing to, uh, to visit. I find it uh, somewhat uh, chilling to, to stand there uh, and, and know that I'm in this very place where that historic event took place. So I want to uh, just introduce you to two or three key historic uh, realities of the province now. And uh, if you come here, you learn more about it. Uh, Confederation with Canada in 1949 was, was very important to this province. Of course, it, you couldn't uh, settle air or, or overwinter in Newfoundland until 1610 or the early 1600s. And then we had a period when we were a British colony, and then we had a period where we were uh, a Commonwealth nation uh, equivalent to Canada and New Zealand, Australia, and, and other places around the world. And uh, in, in, the, in the 30s, we fell on hard times after the Great Depression, and we were saddled with a substantial debt, half of it uh, related to our involvement in the First World War, and uh, democracy was suspended. Our, our nationhood was taken from us at that point with a commission of government. And then in 1948, a national convention was organized to determine the fate of Newfoundland and Labrador uh, forever, I suppose. And uh, there were four options, the continuance of the commission of government or the uh, economic union with the United States, which never made it to the ballot sheet. Uh, then it was returned to, uh, to nationhood or to join Canada. And uh, the story of it, it's, it's really enchanting, uh, the, the bitterness with the, you know, the outports wanting to join Canada and the larger centers wanting to be independent. We had the Catholics were more given to independence and the Protestants to confederation. So uh, between the jigs and the reels uh, on April Fool's Day in, in 1949 with a victory margin of uh, less than 2%, we were, we, as we affectionately say, now we took over Canada. So that, uh, that reality, we get to examine that uh, if you come to visit the province. And just moving now to less than a decade after uh, we joined Canada, 
You heard me say earlier, there might have been upwards to 900 little villages around the province. So uh, the government said, oh, we got too many with a population equivalent to the size of Winnipeg. We cannot afford to have all of those communities. So uh, a number of them, something like 20,000 people were evicted from rural Newfoundland and uh, many of them moved out of the province. So that was a significant uh, part of our, of our history as well. And uh, that uh, there are still, my wife was, was uh, relocated and I still have a number of friends who uh, were forcibly moved out of their uh, villages around the province and into what was called growth centers. And you've probably seen the photographs of being the houses being towed across the sounds and bays to uh, the new locations of the uh, settlers of the abandoned villages was a, kind of a, a sad story, but uh, in terms of uh, economics, it was practical. We, we could ill afford to provide electricity and uh, education, healthcare services and roads and bridges for so many little tiny villages. And when we travel with Adventure Canada, you get to have a look at that. Looking at the province uh, from the ocean, you get to understand why this place was settled the way it was. And it's not a geometric grid like you'd find in a lot of our modern cities and towns, but just coves and bays where there was lots of fish and lots of shelter and lots of room along the shoreline to, to dry uh, cod for the European market. So we fast forward from, uh, from the 60s uh, and the relocation up to 1992. And on July the 3rd, 1992, with the stroke of a pen in Ottawa, another 20,000 people lost employment in the cod fishing industry. And uh, there's, there are indications it was the largest uh, layoff in Canadian history. Uh, but for, for worse than that, it was probably one of the largest ecological disasters in the history of the planet. Uh, just to, to put uh, the cod fishing industry in perspective, we, it sustained us for centuries. And in, uh, in, the, in the 1960s, not long after the Second World War, there were fleets coming from all over the world to harvest cod off the Grand Banks of Newfoundland and Labrador. And at its peak, something like 1.2 million tons of cod was harvested on the Grand Banks of Newfoundland. And uh, today, since 1992, the allocation in Canada has not risen above uh, 40,000 tons. And most years, it was less than 30. So uh, how uh, humankind can manage to destroy such a huge uh, resource on the planet is, uh, is worthy of study. And if you come here, you can uh, learn more about it. So the fallout from the moratorium, if you're thinking about the, uh, the economic uh, sustainability of the province, uh, the proportion of our GDP attributed to the fishery went up in 1993 because we put more strain on more lucrative species like shrimp and crab, but it was a social fallout something like uh, uh, 20,000 people left rural Newfoundland and were displaced from the fishery. Many of them moved out of the province and many of them moved to larger centers. So when we visit again, uh, Newfoundland's uh, rural villages with Adventure Canada, you get to see the uh, social outfall from uh, the moratorium. I'm going to share a song about that. Uh, I was uh, born and raised in Little Bay Islands, and it, you probably heard the news that the community was shut down on the uh, last day of December in, uh, in, in 2019. And when I went to visit my friends after the moratorium, there were new houses boarded up and boats all up on the shore. So I kind of watched the town die. So this is a, a song about the, the loss of our rural identity or part of it through the moratorium. There are many shuttered windows along the road as I drive by and it's as though they hide their faces so that I won't see them cry. And the boats down on the beaches 
all are laying on their sides just like warriors tired and weary who have given up and died my home it will soon be a memory and how i hate to look back and say goodbye but if the sun ever shines on her tomorrow i'll come back and i'll stay on till i die and then i take a road of memories as my mind begins to roam when happy faces in the windows turn those houses into homes and busy boats are bustling through the prowling foam they smile as they enter the calm harbor from the ocean rich and wild and my home it will soon be a memory and how i hate to look back and say goodbye but if the sun ever shines on her tomorrow i'll come back and i'll stay on till i die yeah if the sun ever shines on her tomorrow i'll come back and i'll stay on till i die well that's a bit about uh, newfoundland and labrador um, i'm hoping that it will somehow entice uh, many of you to come and visit us you'll be welcome as the flowers in may i'm going to to take some time uh, in a moment to to talk about why i enjoy uh, newfoundland and labrador in autumn and also I want to uh, talk about my relationship with uh, Adventure Canada because I've been uh, hanging with them from time to time for the past 15 years. But we never know, there might be uh, some burning issues uh, that you have uh, sent to Victoria. I don't know much about these uh, virtual uh, rooms, but Victoria, is there anything uh, that I should uh, address uh, before we go on to talk about uh, autumn in this province? Yes. Um, hi, Tony, and hi, everyone. My name is Victoria. I work for Adventure Canada. And uh, just seeing all your comments here is really making us smile. And we're just super happy to bring you this wonderful presentation from Tony, who's in Newfoundland. I'm in Ontario right now. And here we are presenting it to you wherever you are around the world. So we have some people in the chat. We had a um, one of our fans by the name of RJ. We had William, shout outs to William Tower. Sarah, it's great to see you. We have Chris who says, awesome. Flora Freeze wants to go back to Newfoundland and Labrador. She puts some sad faces. <laughs> We've got uh, some people that are really stunned and a little moved by the history that you're talking about, Tony. I know it's a bit of a, a heavy topic but um, we do appreciate you going into it and, and talking about the stories. And we have uh, Michael Windsor who shared a book on Amazon it's called Lost in Newfoundland. We can provide everybody here with some more resources in the comments at the end. Um, Janet Robinson says she misses the East Coast and she loves the tour that you're giving Tony through your stories and songs. Wonderful province and people. We have, ooh, there's a lot of comments here. Uh, oh, Robert Carson is asking Tony if uh, you can record a ringtone, that song, Thank God We're Surrounded by Water. One of your more <laughs> popular hits on the ship. <laughs> what do you have to say about that? Can you do it for us? Well, that's, that's uh, I, I've just recorded a, um, a song that I wrote for the pandemic um, virtually, you know, I was here in my family room and 
and another uh, musical friend of mine in Cornerbrook and another one in St. John's. So that's that's easy these days. <laughs> Perfect. So uh, you can consider that on the way when it's available. I'm happy to share it on social media so everyone can, uh, can get on board with that. Definitely uh, missing those wake up calls in the morning. Tony, you uh, go up there with your accordion first thing. Sometimes it's as early as 5.30, 6 in the morning and, and there you are improvising songs on the ship. How do you do that? You just do it on the spot or do you well, write it the night that's, before? Yeah, that, that's so much fun. That was, that's, uh, that's delightful. And, and when we get uh, get people who are guests on the ship chiming in and saying, oh, can you put this in your song tomorrow morning? That makes it even more intriguing. So I enjoy oh, so doing you, that. So Tony, you write it the day before and then you perform it in the morning. The night before, yeah. After my after my drink at the bar, usually it's sometime between midnight and, and one in the morning. The, <laughs> that's, that's a really productive time for me. <laughs> yeah, it's when the, the night dwellers are out in the, at the bar in the Nautilus Lounge. That's always a good time. And you have your guitar and you jam yes. and you do little, little circles. Um, Cedar says, Tony, awesome. <laughs> thank you, Peter. Cedar, no, Cedar. Oh, Cedar, Cedar, oh, oh yeah. thank you to her too. Yeah. <laughs> and Chris, Chris Tuck says, lovely tribute. Sad to think of LBI, so Little Bay Islands deserted by I intend to head there in my little Zodiac this summer. So we yeah. have some people that are intrigued and uh, want to go rediscover Little Bay Islands. Yes, we're so, expecting a bumper year out there. A, a lot of people want to see it now as an abandoned village. So there's a yeah. fair amount of charm to that as well. Yeah. So um, Tony, I'll pass it back on to you and you can continue the show. And okay. if anyone has any questions, we'll uh, be answering them in the chat. And I'm happy also to do this at the end. So enjoy. But we're at the 47 minute mark. Tony, take as long as you need. People are having a great time. So we're just happy to have you here. All right. We'll come back with maybe some more comments or questions uh, after sure I talk about uh, Newfoundland a bit more and, and Adventure Canada. Sure yeah. will. So okay, thank you for, you for for all of those uh comments you've uh, fired off to uh, to victoria that's of course i uh, i'm 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 blind in a sense i can't see anybody i i, I don't even know if i'm getting a, a sitting down ovation but uh, i hope so um delighted to be able to to be an ambassador for newfoundland and labrador in a sense uh in this uh, forum and i i uh, thank adventure canada for that uh, opportunity so if you uh, if you join us on the circumnavigation, I'm hoping to be on board. As a, and one of my friends in Newfoundland uh, once said, "If I live, and that I will." Uh, so that's I think it's in October, and you might say, "Well, why would I come to Newfoundland in October?" Well, there I just gave you a hundred good reasons to come to Newfoundland, but uh, autumn is a is a wonderful time here, and I'll attempt in a in, uh, I'm sure an inadequate way to explain why I love autumn in this province, but it's, it goes beyond words. It's uh, it, the feeling of autumn and October month in this province has always been very special uh, for me. Uh, one thing that uh, stands out is how much I enjoy looking at the fall colors from the ocean. Um, especially when we get to the south coast, it's glorious. The, you know, with the breathtaking scenery and then the fall colors uh, thrown in, it's truly remarkable uh, to be uh, going around this, at the coast of this province in October. Also the sounds, you might think this is crazy, but the sounds of October have enchanted me. I remember in my university years, my, my parents would not hear of me being involved in the fishery. So I went off to the university and uh, one of the, the, the best memories I have of coming home to Little Bay Islands in October was the sound. I, I, I could stand outside our house and it sounded like the seagulls and their, their voices were more amplified. It was just, it was so beautiful. And it was, that was a, a strong incentive for me, the sounds of Little Bay Islands in October for me not to return to my program at the university. 
Similar to lighting, again, I, I, there must be some scientific reason for this, but the lighting and the, the warm, the soft blues uh, that go with the sky and the autumn uh, leaves in October has, has always been intriguing uh, for me. Another advantage uh, for coming here in the fall is that a lot of our, our fisheries are still open. I pointed out earlier that we, we do have a very small uh, total allowable catch of cod in the province, and it's quite likely that, that some of that will be caught while you're here. So uh, with Adventure Canada, I've had many of the occasion to pull up to some fisherman's vessel to, and watch them pulling their gill nets or operating uh, their trawls. So you, if you get to see the cod fishery in action, both commercial and recreational, uh, and then also uh, in a lot of the villages, we still dry fish here. And another element of autumn that I enjoy is the smell of drying fish. The fish are out on the flakes and we're doing it for household consumption, of course, but uh, that smell of, uh, of drying fish has, has been uh, a glorious uh, memory for me as well. And also in autumn, the, the spring uh, is, is connected to rejuvenation, but in the social circles of Newfoundland, that's rejuvenated in autumn. After the children go back to school, the community organizations are starting to start up and flourish again. And, we have all of the volunteer organizations that, that we with Adventure Canada interact with. They're in, uh, in full bloom and they're quite welcoming uh, for our groups and they're well organized. And if you go to, if you go to rural Newfoundland with Adventure Canada, the first caution is to be careful making eye contact because uh, you could miss the vessel. You could wind up in somebody's house, you know, for for some, some buns and biscuits or a feed of fish and brews or a feed of something else. So the people are very welcoming and that time of the year, uh, they're out and about like never before. So these are uh, a number of reasons why uh, I encourage you to join the, uh, the circumnavigation of Newfoundland in autumn. Uh, just uh, to move uh, finally to my relationship with Adventure Canada, and I, I, I speak as a, as a Newfoundlander who lives in a rural part of the province. And uh, I've, ever since my, my first uh, experience with Adventure Canada, I've cherished the reality that they pay attention to the rural villages because it's my firm belief that the essence of who we are as a people can be found in the villages, the tiny villages, whether it's Francois on the south coast or whether it's Conch on the northeast coast or whether it's Little Bay Islands up in Green Bay. But really the essence of who we are as a people is found in those villages uh, more so. Not to say that St. John's is uh, not intriguing, but uh, the tiny fishing villages uh, represent uh, what I love about Adventure Canada because we go into a number of them. Also, we on the on the ship. Um, you may it's difficult for me to explain or to have you get a good understanding of the expertise that's on board. But uh, I, I've just learned so much from uh, the people, whether it's in the field of archaeology or wildlife biology or geology, and just uh, on the topic of geology, that third. World Heritage Site in, uh, in Gross Morn, we visit that as well. Uh, the geology of Newfoundland is, is very special and Adventure Canada gives us a chance to, to examine uh, the reality that this is the world's uh, best laboratory uh, for the explanation of the tectonic plate theory of geological evolution. So I'm bored, and, and not to mention the arts, I've had the, the, uh, the, the honor and pleasure to sail with a number of uh, prominent Newfoundland uh, writers and musicians and, and, and filmmakers uh, over the years. And I salute Adventure Canada for paying attention uh, to those people and providing people like myself and a lot of others with the opportunity to, uh, to show the music that we've written. It's just another uh, soapbox. 
uh, for us to stand on and, uh, and it's been uh, totally delightful. Uh, Venture Canada has also uh, been involved in and, and engaged in the community. It's, uh, it hasn't been an organization that just comes there and leaves. The, uh, the people in this village, they've been to Cox's Cove where I am right now a number of times and I still, when people meet me on the streets, they quite often ask about, uh, you know, Matthew and Cedar and Alana and MJ. They got to know them personally. So it's, uh, they've become household names, uh, the Swans in this uh, community and uh, that level of community engagement. I've worked with a lot of uh, tour companies from all over the world uh, both in the large cruise ship business and in bus expeditions and every form of, uh, of travel. But uh, I have to say that my favorite in terms of uh, engagement in Newfoundland in, our, in our, our history and culture has been Adventure Canada. If you were to look at it through my eyes as a community volunteer, when Adventure Canada comes to town, it creates excitement. Uh, these people, they, they love to get out and show off. If you went into Conch with us last year and saw the volunteers in that community lay down 200 plus servings of codfish and uh, they, it was just so much a sense of pride for the community to be able to, to do that. And then uh, it, there's, it's, the chests are puffed when the, when the ship leaves. You know, there's a sense of satisfaction and, uh, and, and community spirit for the villages where Adventure Canada chooses to, to visit. Also, uh, the, if you come in and visit Newfoundland with Adventure Canada in autumn, you'll get to support a number of community organizations financially. Uh, whether the example I just gave with the with the uh, codfish dinner in Conch, you know, that, uh, that Adventure Canada has been generous in financially rewarding community-based organizations who have put off those spreads or the entertainment uh, segments that go with it and the use of their buildings and, and in, in Conch, the tapestry there, you know, you, you get to support the church, you get to support pretty well every volunteer organization in the town and in a lot of other communities, it's exactly the same. So that's another reason why I enjoy uh, working with Adventure Canada and why I encourage you to, uh, to join them on the circumnavigation in October. And also now I've been around them enough now that uh, I've had uh, plenty of opportunity to measure, measure their, uh, their concern and compassion and quite often when we visit Ontario, which we have a lot of friends in the GTA, but we usually uh, look up one of the swans while we're there and, and go visit. So that speaks to, uh, to, their, uh, to their level of, uh, of friendship. Um, in terms of uh, transformational uh, tourism, that's, that's probably what I enjoy most about working with Adventure Canada in their, uh, in their programs in Newfoundland and Labrador and others. I've done a number of others with them as well. But we get, you get to look at global issues. It's, it's not to go somewhere to look at something and buy a t-shirt and leave. Uh, we get into issues, you know, where, where you get to, to examine uh, world problems, whether it's, whether it's the moratorium, whether it's climate change, whether it's, you know, the the sealing industry and the EU and US ban on the importation of steel products, whether it's aquaculture, whether it's pollution or food security, all of those issues uh, you get to examine. You don't really care if you make up your mind, you know, and it's not my objective to, for, you know, to cause a revolt and, and try to get the, uh, the importation of seal products, uh, the ban uh, overturned, but just to examine the issues and to be uh, involved in, uh, in the problems of the planet. And I totally enjoy that part of Adventure Canada's uh, presence in Newfoundland and Labrador, because we are a province where a lot of the, the world problems, whether it's climate change or, or whether it's uh, stewardship of the resources of the ocean, 
but they show up there and it's not just a problem for us, it's a problem for humankind. So we get to, to uh, examine all of those issues and a lot more. And a part of that as well has been the partners that uh, have traveled with Adventure Canada. I think uh, particularly about the young explorers and I just have fond memories of some young uh, PhD candidate from California taking samples of the water in every port we went so that she could uh, study, you know, the presence of microplastics and it's seeping into the food chain of the ocean. You know, these are important issues. And then we, we had slow food uh, on the program one year, uh, the taste of place and I've uh, totally enjoyed uh, people from outside Newfoundland coming here and tasting some of our foods, whether it was a feed of Towtons or uh, whether it was the, the scallop we harvested up on the South Coast, or whether it's the, uh, the, the uh, delicacy of seal meat that was provided in the kitchen was something that I wasn't used to, but I said, hey, that was neat. So all of these uh, partnerships uh, that Adventure Canada has and takes on the ship has been uh, totally intriguing for me over the years. And then finally, it's their, uh, the involvement in the arts. I own three albums, um, 500 years, uh, and I, I own one called Rubicon, and I own one called Viking Trails. And I've had a chance to, as I did today, to show some of the material on those albums and a lot of my colleagues in the arts community in Newfoundland, whether it's authors or, or playwrights, uh, we, we all cherish uh, working with Adventure Canada and getting to, uh, to show off our artwork in this province. So it's been, uh, it's been a total pleasure for me to work with Adventure Canada. And, uh, and I encourage uh, those of you who are watching to take advantage of the program in, uh, in autumn this year and, come and join us. So Victoria, that's pretty well uh, all I came here to right, say. Tony. You should probably right. make more um, opportunities so for questions or comments or observations. I wanna make a correction. The All of our programs this year have been canceled due to the current climate with- Oh uh, well, yes, I'm talking about 21. Yeah, yeah 20, I, 2021, yeah. we're going back yes, again. Yes. We're really excited about that, so. I 2020, uh, 2020 as a write-off is a given for me at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll uh, find in our chat, I put a link there for any future uh, Newfoundland expeditions that you may be interested in. So in 2021, we're going back in the fall. And yeah, so um, Tony, did you have any more songs or, or did you want to wrap it up with a a big thank you. Everyone's been saying they're doing a sitting ovation for you, not a standing, a sitting ovation. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to to make a plug. Um, of course, you know, when we react to to things in this province usually with a song or a story, but uh, I wrote a song called "Together Apart," and uh, and I have a, a professional recording of it. But my wife, uh, Joan, did a recording of me just sitting a footstep from where I am now uh, with that song. And uh, it's, uh, it, it takes a positive spin. And we got to find some good. And I'm hoping that uh, the world will come together in and, and, and our war against whether it's, you know, uh, COVID-19 or whether it's some, some uh, future similar issue and that we will stop killing each other and, and try to cooperate more on an international level with finding cures or preventative measures for these uh, pandemics that come up. And also my song, I'm totally grateful for the people on the front lines, whether they're first responders or whether they're workers in, uh, in medical uh, facilities or whether it's extended care homes, but these people put their lives on the line. You know, if you were if you were at war, you'd get a tin hat and a gun, but a lot of these people didn't get anything. So I wrote that song and I'd love for as many people as possible to hear it. So it is available, uh, Joan Park Oxford is the Facebook uh, link, I think. Uh, I think it can be looked up. I have no presence on Facebook, but you can do that. And uh, I'm sure Adventure Canada will make available the uh, 
MP3 version. I'm not selling it. It's just a labor of love and, uh, and a song that I wrote to, to uh, support those who are supporting us at this time. So in anybody who would get that and share it on Joan's link, Joan Park Oxford, I'd be more than appreciative. Yeah, Tony, I'm also happy to handle sending out the MP3 if you're interested. Um, yes. If you're interested, please leave a message in the chat and just say so. I'll reach out to you and, uh, and we'll exchange our email so that I can send it your way if that's easier. And yeah, go from there. It's a great song. That's a wonderful thought that you've sent out to the frontline workers during this time. Thank you, Tony, for that. Pleasure is all mine. <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed the presentation today. And uh, Tony will be joining us in October of next year on Newfoundland. If you would like to travel with him, he's quite the character. He's a great host, entertainer. He's a great Zodiac driver. He does it all. He really does it all. And he lives and breathes Newfoundland. And it's yes. so refreshing. So refreshing to have you around, Tony. So thanks for joining us yeah. today. If you had any... Oh, Sarah wants the song. We already got some people asking for the song, Tony. So I'll... Oh, I'll the, 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 the COVID song? Yes, the COVID song. Oh, okay. <laughs> or do you I'll want to play that. right now? Let, let's play right now. And then we'll close off after that, okay? All right. Well, uh, thank you to Adventure Canada for this opportunity to, uh, to talk about Newfoundland and Labrador. And uh, I, I look forward to seeing a lot of you, or all of you for that matter, who are on this uh, feed today, come here. Here's, here's my song. The world is at war. All humankind. A fool we can't see. left us all blind the whole world is one must answer the call it's all on the line our backs to the wall no longer a battle Between us and them With an eye for an eye We can no longer win Killing each other We'll just have to cease The new war we're fighting lead us to peace we must join together by staying apart though not in my arms you are still in my heart find us a shell Stay safe and warm Together apart We will weather this God bless our warriors On the front line Fighting defenseless in a race against time, heroes among us with courage and grace leading a battle for the whole human race. Must join together by staying apart, though not.
God in my arms You are still in my heart Find us a shelter Stay safe and warm Together apart We will weather this storm Thanks again. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. And thank you everybody for joining us today. It's, it's been great. Thanks, Tony, for bringing your stories and songs to us and our audience here. And um, we wish you the very best. We hope to see you soon. And maybe we'll do another one, Tony. Who knows? Right? You never know. All never the best. Know. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks again. Time. Thanks from Newfoundland and Labrador. <laughs> bye bye Thank you, everyone and if you wanted tony's song please leave a comment in the chat and i'll reach out to you with a way uh, to receive it in an mp3 format so you can hear it at home thank you great bye 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 <laughs>